We go back now to the Bible Belt and the story of a child kept as a servant in her own family. For years, her father, a Baptist minister, had managed to keep secret what was going on, but suspicions had begun to surface. And then, without warning, the girl vanished. Sylvia Chase picks up the story. Faith is fundamental to the people who live in these hills and border towns along the Tennessee and Virginia line. There ought to be something that you care about that you want God to do. When word began to circulate that Pastor Joe Combs might be in trouble with the law, he took his quarrel with the police to the airwaves. I'm scared. Uh, my family's scared. We have seen so many crooked things done since last February. We have no reason to believe that justice will be done. The conflict between the pastor and the detective escalated. And with Esther nowhere in sight, Detective Richmond had Combs ordered to court. Mr. Combs testified under oath that she had ran away and he had no idea where she was at. I didn't leave home. I was sent away. Joe sent me away because the police kept coming around. Indeed, Esther hadn't run away. She was sent first to Charleston, South Carolina, to a fellow preacher's house, and then on to Watkinsville, Georgia, and the home of Susan and Roger Combs, Joe's brother. Experiencing normal family life for the first time, Esther felt confident enough to confide in her Aunt Susan. Out tumbled the long-held secrets of her tortured life. Many, many, many nights, um, uh, Esther and I would sit up. Basically, she would be crying, you know, and, uh, but it must have made you very angry. Oh, yeah. Esther was safe here, but still threatened by phone calls from Joe and Evangeline Combs, who said Esther was making it all up. He said, she said that? And I said, yes. And uh, I said, we believe her. He said, it's not true. You know, none of that happened. And now you knew your brother was lying to you. Oh, yeah. He knew it. I knew it. I know it. She had been gone for six months, beyond the reach of the family that had hurt her so deeply. We love you. Yes, we do. Hoping that the detective back in Bristol still cared, Esther made a bid for survival. She called for help. Out of the blue. She called me on the telephone from Georgia, and she said, I want to tell you everything that has happened to me from the time I was a baby. Wow. And I laid the phone down, and I screamed, <laughs> because I knew that I could help her then. Detective Richmond immediately drove to Georgia, and in this home, in this room, began to hear the story of Esther's life of her ordeal in the fellowship hall, home to the combs where no one outside the family had been permitted. As we walked, Detective Richmond revealed that not only had Esther been brutally beaten, she had told the detective she was sexually abused as well, often in the men's bathroom. A lot of the beatings occurred in here where she would be made to stand in a circle. She said uh, one would beat her until that one got tired and then the other one would start beating her. She was beat with ropes, chains, whips, umbrellas, bats, hammers. Joe and Evangeline Combs were arrested in November of 1998, and Esther was there. Debbie let me come, because I wanted, I wanted to see, I wanted them to see me. You know, Debbie hadn't done it, I had done it. I'm the one that told. And what happened, did you speak to them? She come walking over to me and telling me how much she loved me and that I was her baby girl. I think it was the first time that she had said I love you that many times. What did you say? Every time she kept telling me that she loved me, I just kept telling her I didn't want her love. As much as I did, I'd always wanted it. I just kept telling her I didn't want it. But even at that moment? I wanted it. 
Joseph and Evangeline Combs pled not guilty to charges unthinkable in this small town. Child abuse, kidnapping, rape. And their other children rose to their defense. Brothers Jimmy and David Combs and sister Cindy also denied any involvement in Esther's alleged abuse. So if your brothers and sisters say that they never saw you beaten, then they're lying. But the trial was approaching, and it would be Esther's word against the rest of her family, not the strongest of cases against a powerful preacher in a town of true believers. Prosecutors worried. Then an almost miraculous discovery in a curbside trash can.